captain's build-up would not have been out of place for an FA Cup final, 24 hours before the game at a quiet Hertfordshire hotel, at the request of the players themselves to focus their attention on their task ahead. When it was finally time to leave for White Hart Lane, autographs were politely given, but there was no disguising that their minds were elsewhere. It's probably an, an important, the most important league game that uh, I've played in, in a 10-year career in England, certainly. And I think it's probably Everton's most important league game since they clinched the championship in uh, the late, the early 70s, was it? Mm -hmm. I think it's as big as 1970. It's as big a game since then. I don't think Everton have had a more important league game, and we all feel that. We feel that if we can get a result tonight, we can go on and and complete the, the season nicely. By a result, do you mean a win, or would a, a draw satisfy? No, I think only wins satisfy this team. A short coach journey into North London, but Everton knowing that they'd come a long way to arrive at Tottenham as league leaders and championship favourites. The thronging crowds around the ground, a reminder, as if one was needed, of the significance of the action ahead. But an unbeaten run of 17 games is a useful ally in strengthening the nerve, for the staff as well as the team. Inside White Hart Lane, more than 48,000 attracted by the First Division's match of the season. All asking the question, could Everton's impressive credentials stand another stern examination? Or could Tottenham forget their recent aberrations on home territory and produce their own mercurial brand of football? But it was a mistake by defender Paul Miller that tilted the match away from Spurs. And Andy Gray's response to the chance worthy of the grand occasion. Everton led in the tenth minute. Glenn Hoddle might have equalised, perhaps should have done, dragging his shot across goal. But in the second half, when young Mark Bowen was caught by Trevor Stephen, another Tottenham error was ruthlessly punished. Stephen providing an astonishingly mature finish. Everton might have killed the match off then and there. Kevin Sheedy recalled for the unlucky Kevin Richardson, almost adding to his catalogue of goals of genuine quality. But Graham Roberts typically refused to accept defeat and kept the match alive. 2-1, still 17 minutes left. And the stage set to mock those who call Everton a team with no stars. Mark Falco's header somehow kept out by Neville Southall. A save that brought Ray Clements to his knees at the other end in frustration. And then a show of admiration. Everton were home and could celebrate a victory even in a season punctuated by matches of great consequence that will live long in their memory. It's a magnificent result at the end of the day, Martin. I think, in all honesty, we might have just settled for a draw before the match. Although, I said to you before we came here to win it, we did. But I think had we walked off with a draw, we'd have been more than happy. But uh, we've played exceptionally well. And again, it was another superb team performance. If I could just mention that save that never pulled off a few minutes ago. That is what wins your league championships. It's not beating Manchester United 5 0 at Goodison, which we did earlier in the season. It's coming here and never pulling off a save like that with two minutes to go. If we lose on Saturday against Sunderland, then this game today has gone, meant nothing. So that's the most important game for us. It's, it's three points at the end of the day. That's all you get for beating Tottenham. It's all you get for beating Stoke City. There's no extra points for beating Spurs at White Hart Lane.